Hi everyone, I'm Jack for Emling Rack and Turn. I hope that you're doing well. I'd like to share a few thoughts on The Tale of AP by Ak Welsapar. This is the first novel I've read from Turkmenistan, and Welsapar does a really thorough job of creating a sense of life in a Turkmen village on the Caspian Sea. It's set primarily in the 1980s, as uh, the Soviet Union is beginning its, uh, its disintegration, but we're not to that point yet. And in those final throws, uh, national control over this village and this land is asserted in a, in a way that just wrecks everyone's life, uh, everyone's sense of tradition and continuity, because the, the waters near where this fishing village is are found to have medicinal purposes. But everybody has to leave in order for the, the wealthy to be able to, to access, you know, and, and the government elites, the, the top members of the society, to be able to come access the, the medicinal waters. So fishing is banned. And, and we see how life is changing very quickly, very subtle changes occur. Uh, we see how young people there, who perhaps never even wanted to fish, begin to go into cities and, and find new jobs. Uh, one, one man who has a family is, wants to maintain his skill as a fisherman and seems to defy regulation and head out at night to fish and hide on an island. So we see all these different things happening. We see sort of the final wedding that will take place in this village. And uh, it's very poignant for the, the village elders who, who are experiencing this for the last time. Um, but this, this very sort of timeless tale of, you know, generations changing, uh, a, a village having to move on, people having to move on as, as there's some shift in their culture or, or their experience. Uh, all of that modernism versus tradition is set and framed with this incredible tale of AP. And we find out that centuries earlier, uh, a young woman, AP, had been out and it had come across some, some people who were essentially believed to be invaders. They had asked her some questions and after she answered a few questions, they gave her this beautiful necklace with a red um, jewel on it. And when the village found out, they sacrificed her. And we find this out in the first 10 pages of the book. Uh, and so AP, as the village is disintegrating, AP returns as a ghost, um, but she's able to interact in some ways with different characters and in a sense is trying to seek her revenge. So we also have this conflict of uh, individual responsibility versus communal responsibility. Um, the idea of how uh, we, within this culture, men and women are each responding to changes, in a sense, catastrophes in very different ways. How is the, the, the final you know, death rattle of the Soviet Union asserting itself over this Turkmen village? So it's a very um, well-drawn book. The, the characterizations for a number of the characters are are very solid, they're sketched out very well, but I wanted to give a sense of the actual reading. So Araz is thinking uh, and having a discussion about uh, his, you know, all of these changes, and he says to his wife, if they go, then fine, let them all go to the devil and beyond. They can go right now. You two, I'll stay here and I won't go anywhere, even if they kill me. This is where my umbilical cord was cut, my true birth place, and see there, over that hill is where my ancestors are buried. How could I let myself be forced out from here? My father and my father's father too lie mixed with that sand and his grandfather as well. Seven generations of my ancestors. Where would I go if I left them? This place here is my coast, my land, my waters. If the earth itself moved, I would still stay. I'd break the ribs of anyone who would try to make me if they're tired of living. He turned aside and lowered his voice, gasping a little. Taking a moment to recover, he said, as my father lay there dying, he told me, don't abandon this beach or this sea. We are not shepherds. We're a settled people, fishermen. I, my father and my father's father fished here, lived out their lives so that you two and your children also might be fishermen. His wife's quiet sniffling interrupted the fisherman's sad voice, but Araz resumed after a momentary pause. This coast is the inheritance my father left me. If I washed my hands of it, I'd be nothing, understand nothing. Now though I have some honor, at least it's right in front of me. Will I live on my own coast and land in my own home? I'm a man. So let those folks go where they may. I have no other place to go. I will stay. Um, and then at the end, as, as they, they finish this discussion, with that, he brought his wife closer to himself with a different sort of force. In his powerful arms, she became eclipsed like the moon behind the edge of a cloud until only her black hair on the pillow remained seen. Her husband's sun-blackened, sea-beaten shoulders turned to salt on her warm lips and tongue. Um, so there we have that contrast of this, you know, firm and confident assertion from Aras, who's one of the key characters in the novel, uh, then with the, the you know, very um, vivid imagery there at the end. Uh, so there, there, there are elements like that throughout the work. Um, in another situation, uh, there's a character who says, let's see, where is it? 
Nurtagen, uh, do you know where we are right now? Nurtagen gave him a confused look, not knowing what to say. If I'm not mistaken, he answered cautiously, we're sitting out in the desert, but yes, go on, Merit said eagerly. What else? Well, continued Nurtagen, if you're checking on me, we're at the wedding of your youngest son. No, he yelled in his companion's ear. I mean, what kind of times we're in? Oh, in that case, it's the end of spring and the beginning of summer. Can't you feel the sun drilling into our heads and boiling our brains? Merit shook his head. Listen, he declared, answering his own question. We're the exact midpoint between the past and the future. You and I are nearer to the past, so we don't even understand the present. It's like a veiled woman to us. Time has passed us by. Soon these eyes will see only visions from the past. Uh, there's an incredible scene where Arad, who, Arad who's, who is sort of this, this single voice of defiance towards the end, uh, is arrested and taken to uh, the, the city where he's lambasted, he even draws into a co confrontation with the official and says, you're Turkmen, not, you know, why are you, why are you being this voice from Leningrad? You understand like our culture and our, you know, our heritage. Why are you doing this for them? Um, and, and there's a whole discussion around them. He mentions the, the graves of his family again, and that official just dismisses it. And it's like, oh, you need those moved? We can move those too. We'll arrange that, it'll take us two days. Um, and so there, there's some very powerful scenes there. Uh, but I want to close with a, a section that really gives a sense of, of how vivid Welsapar's language can be. Clouds of downy pollen blown by the scorching wind landed on the hills and mixed with the sand, turning the entire area as gray as wolf pelt. It was hot beyond all endurance and a bitter, heavy smelling breeze blew from the sea. People found no relief. First they ran out of their simple homes, then they ran back inside. The old and the infirm had it worst of all. They tried to overcome the horrible searing heat by drinking tea and worried, lest conditions grew even worse. But what was the use? When the sun did its worst, the sand got so hot it began to stir and whirl over the hills, moving towards the sea. The searing dust twisted in the air as it blew over the village, down to the beach, and finally into the sea to temper the heat. The sea made its own depredations, sending water surging and boiling towards the houses as it sought after a distant coolness only hinted at on the gray horizon. In the afternoon, an oppressive silence settled over the coast. Earth and heaven vibrated in expectation of uncertain danger. Creatures of all kinds retreated to their homes. Bird to nest, beast to den, only the gulls gathered up and flew over the low, low over the dark waters, squawking away to secret redoubts. To the east and the west, where the battle between earth and sea was most pitched, gray cliffs drew back in trepidation as the sea mounted an offensive against them. The sea threw itself forward to escape from the scorching sun, headbutted the coast like a ram, and then retreated once more to recover strength from the replenishing depths until it could hit back even harder. At times, the water made inroads farther up the beach, scalding its extremities on the hot sand, hissing like a cobra. It would spit white froth as it rushed forward, then moan and draw back its amorphous fringes, licking wounds like an animal. A moment later, with that fervor of a cornered predator, it would throw itself towards the coast again. Uh, and that's what you get with Wesselpar. Uh, I will certainly be hopefully reading more of his works. I know the past few novels and, and novellas that he's written have been translated into English, I believe by the same company that did The Tale of AP. Uh, he also has a work, Cobra, which um, I, I'm interested in reading that's a, a little bit older, I wanna say a decade or two older. Uh, but yeah, this was a really enjoyable and interesting, rewarding read. Uh, it's a couple of works I was reminded of, certainly Paula Marshall with The Chosen Place, The Timeless People, and the idea of sort of the, the individuals who know better arriving to a rural community and wanting to just shift everything. Um, there are elements of it that reminded me a little bit of uh, Bessie Head's Maru, which is just a fantastic book uh, set in Botswana. The um, sort of supernatural, uh, magically realistic aspects of AP coming as a ghost and interacting with characters and seeking revenge and the way that we get her interiority in a way that we don't necessarily get the interiority of a huge number of the, the living human characters reminded me a lot of the works of Gogol, specifically his uh, Ukrainian tales, but also some of his tales set in St. Petersburg. And additionally, uh, sort of a later contemporary, um, Nikolai Levskov's works that, that reveal very different sides of life in the Russian Empire at the uh, end of the 19th century. And then finally, one sort of historical connection would be that um, one of the great, you know, historical cities of what is now modern Turkmenistan, Merv, is a key setting in Visen Ramin by uh, Fakhreddin Gorgani, one of my all-time favorite works that I encountered last year. So uh, I would highly recommend The Tale of Api if you've, if you've never uh, read anything set in, you know, sort of that part of Central Asia. So hope everyone's doing well. Thanks.